Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be reviewing the Topo Athletic ST5. So three pros that I have with the ST5 is number one, this can be a really good transitional shoe from traditional training shoes to barefoot shoes in my opinion. So with this model, you have a midsole that has a stack height of 14 millimeters. This is gonna be thicker than your traditional barefoot shoe that ranges anywhere from like five-ish to six to sometimes eight millimeters, but it's a little bit thinner than your traditional training shoes that typically have thicker midsoles. So if you are somebody that wants to make that transition from your traditional shoes or even like your thicker running shoes to more minimalist focus shoes, this can be a really good bridge model in my opinion. There aren't a ton of models on the market that really kind of hit this tone besides like limbs and some other options out there. So the Topo Athletic ST5 I think adds a nice option for my more athletic focused individuals. The second pro that I have with this shoe is if you're somebody that loves having a very light weight and sock like fitting shoe with a high degree of breathability, that's where the ST5 is going to excel. This model's mesh upper breathes really well and it's super lightweight. So with the zip foam midsole in this shoe, it also has a high degree of flexibility. So if you're somebody that wants that shoe that can be worn barefoot or with socks in hotter climates and hotter gym settings, that's where I think this shoe will excel. And I like how the upper does have a good amount of volume, especially the toe box. It does give you a little bit more of like this wispy, breathable feel. The third pro that I have with this shoe is that it can be a really good option, I think, for folks that want a wider zero drop shoe for training. So the shoe will work for light to moderate strength sessions. So basically when deadlifting up to 315 pounds, the midsole in the shoe did an okay job regarding stability. Would I go much heavier in the shoe? That's up for debate. I think you will start to notice compression. So for example, when I started to hit a threshold in my Hatfield squats around like 365-ish pounds, that's when I started to notice this midsole start to compress a bit. So I will say you will have some lifting limitations in the shoe. Also, in regard to cross training, this model will work for the most part, but because we have exposed foam here on the outsole, I would say be conscious of training outdoors or on turf. You can have a little bit of slip depending on what you're doing. So for example, with lateral work, you might have some slip in the shoe, but for most work where you're going forwards, backwards, or even you're on the forefoot doing lateral work like skater strides, this shoe should work for that context. But now let's talk about a couple of cons that I have with the ST5. So three cons that I have with the ST5 is number one, I'm a little bit concerned about their long-term durability. So if you invest in the shoe, there are two areas that I would suggest keeping an eye on. Number one, the outsole with the exposed foam here if you're doing a lot of outdoor work and running. And then number two, up here on the toe box. Because we only have a thin extended outsole lip here, if you're doing a lot of work where you might be doing some toe dragging, so doing burpees for example, that would be an area that would give me a little bit of concern with this shoe because its upper is so lightweight. And with its toe guard here, it kind of sticks out. So that's gonna be a little bit more prone to catching that ground if you're doing any form of work where there's gonna be friction on the upper and the forefoot of your shoe. The second con that I have with this model is if you're somebody that does not like arch support at all and you have a super flat midfoot, that would be something to consider with this shoe. And if you do decide to try them on or exchange them, definitely do so in a clean or indoor setting. That way you can for sure exchange them if they don't work regarding their arch and you're a little bit concerned already. But this model does have a little bit of built-in arch support. So despite being a wider shoe, you will notice that I think if you have a flatter arch and you don't like any arch at all, I have a normal arch arch and I notice it. So I think other folks who are very prone to not wanting arch in their shoes, they're definitely going to notice that. The third con that I have with this model is just understanding that, and this isn't necessarily a knock against the shoe's performance, that it will have some limitations in the gym. I mentioned this earlier, but this would not be my go-to shoe for training over 315 pounds on squat and deadlift. And then also for cross training, you might have some limitations. For example, you're not going to have the most lateral support in the shoe if you are a very lateral focused athlete or individual or lifter. And you're also going to have that exposed foam, so you might not get the best grip on different surfaces. All that said though, SD5 has been a pretty good shoe, and I think it definitely has a very niche focus where it's going to excel, but now let's talk about the performance of this shoe. To break down the performance of the ST5, I'll discuss how this shoe does for lifting, cross training, short runs, and daily wear. In the context of lifting, this model will work if you're keeping your loading once again to like light to moderate range. So moderate in the context of like 315 pounds and below on squats and whatnot. Now this model's midsole I think will work for most individuals 
muscles, especially if you are that runner that wants that shoe for some gym focused workouts as well. So if you're doing dumbbell, kettlebell work, or even just doing body weight training, this shoe's midsole will give you plenty of stability for those needs in my opinion. Also, I like how that articulates really well. So for split squats and lunges, I like how the shoe moves with the foot and how lightweight and sock like it feels at times. Now, what I will say is with this shoe, if you are planning to use them for heavier strength work and you do decide to get this model and you wanna do like hack squats and leg presses, be conscious of the outsole in this shoe because you don't have a full rubber outsole. I don't want you having slip issues and because machines can vary, especially in the context of humidity in your gyms, this would be something to think about with this model if you plan to use them for heavier strength training sessions. In the context of cross training, the shoe does a pretty good job. For example, for box jumps, jump rope, and exercises like that, the shoe has excelled. I like how breathable it is. I like that I can wear it with socks or without socks and they feel pretty comfortable for my athletic days. And I like how much flexibility you get with the shoe. Plus, if you are once again really big on having a lightweight shoe on the foot for jumping and doing different types of explosive movements, that's where I think you'll really enjoy this shoe as well. I will say with that arch, you might not like it if you're doing a lot of power focus movements and you're trying to like let that arch collapse and react and do its thing, but that's gonna be a personal preference and sizing and fit concern that you'll wanna think about before buying the shoe for cross training. In the context of short runs, this model has done a pretty good job. I see them as a really good shoe for like, let's say you're a barefoot shoe runner that doesn't necessarily wanna go full on barefoot shoe for their run, but they want a little bit of cushion, they want a wider toe box, and they want a zero drop shoe. So that's where I think the shoe can excel. It kind of reminds me of the Ultra Solstice XT2 in that vertical. So if you're planning to do like one, two, three mile runs, this model will work. I have not run more than that volume in this shoe. So if you need somebody to give you an assessment of how the shoe is gonna work, for example, for like seven miles, I'm not gonna be your guy, but for short runs, this model I think should work plenty well. What I will say though, is if you're using them for outdoor runs, be conscious of again, this exposed foam. And if you're running in inclement weather, that would definitely be a concern that I have with the shoe because water and mud I think would break this down a little bit faster than running in dry climates. When it comes to daily wear, I like this shoe. It's comfortable, it's lightweight and breathable, and I like how you do have that wider toe box. So you get a nice width in the shoe and with its zero drop construction, I think if you're on your feet all day walking around for work or standing, whether it's for like a retail job or even like nursing or something to that extent, I think this model should work for that context. It's not gonna give you as much cushion as like a Hoka, for example, or a traditional running shoe, but it's gonna give you a little bit more than your traditional barefoot shoe. So if you want that zero drop shoe for more casual use, the ST5 I think can be a pretty good option option to look into in that vertical. To discuss the price of the ST5, you can expect to pay 115 USD in this model. Now, is that price point fair for what this shoe offers? I'm honestly pretty hit or miss. I think if you're gonna be rotating the shoe in, you could have this model last longer, which could make the price point more justified. I would also suggest like signing up for the email list or trying to knock some money off of this shoe. I think that brings down the price 10%. That's what I did when I bought my model. But 115 for this shoe, since it's not the best performer in any one vertical, if you are very niche with your training asks, that's where I would say the price point could be a little bit more of a miss for your needs. All right, so now it's answer the question, who should buy the Topo Athletic ST5? So number one, if you are a barefoot shoe lover, but you do want models that have a little bit more cushion, that's where this model could be a really strong pick for you. With a stack height of 14 millimeters, you're gonna have a little bit more cushion in this shoe, so it can be a nice model to give you a break from your more minimalist barefoot shoe soles that you might wanna break from. The second context is if you are somebody who's transitioning into barefoot shoes from traditional training shoes and running shoes, this could be a good option to explore with its zero drop construction and a little bit more cushion once again. I think you will have a slightly more comfortable ride regarding acclimating you to zero drop shoes or shoes that have a little bit more of like a minimalist vibe to them. So it's a good bridge model in that context. The third context is if you have a wider foot and you want a wider toe box and a zero drop shoe for training, working out, and some short runs, that's where this model can also excel. It's also very lightweight and breathable, so tack that on to that last ask if you're looking for that type of shoe. Now, who shouldn't buy this shoe? Number one, if you're somebody that has a very flat midfoot and you hate any form of arch in your shoes, I would say probably pass on the shoe or once again, try them on inside so you can return them if you need to. And the second context is if you're somebody that wants a zero drop shoe for very heavy lifting, this would be a miss on this model. You're not gonna get as much stability as like a traditional barefoot shoe or a model that's built for lifting that has a zero millimeter heel to toe drop. When it comes to 
to sizing and fit in the Topo Athletic ST5. I think most folks should be safe going true to size in this model. I have an E-width foot and I wear a size 10. I found this model's length to run pretty true and its width is plenty fine for my foot's needs. So I think if you have a wider foot, you should be set in this model. Again though, with its arch, you wanna tread lightly there if you have a very flat midfoot and you don't want any arch at all in your shoes. But overall, true to size should be safe for most folks. When it comes to the weight, heel, toe drop, and insole in the ST5, for my size 10 model here, we have a weight around nine ounces. The heel to toe drop in this shoe is zero millimeters, and this model does have a thin foam removable insole. All right, so now let's cover the construction of the ST5. So up here on the toe box, we have a thin extended outsole layer that wraps up. Honestly, I wish this was widened a little bit, especially on the medial side. That would give you a little bit more protection regarding towing off with that big toe when running and training. When looking at the upper in this shoe, you have a mesh upper and you also have an internal toe guard here. So this toe piece is a little bit more rigid. That covers the forefoot of the shoe. It stops right about here at where that pinky toe is. And then the upper itself is a breathable mesh that extends the entirety of this shoe. You do have some synthetic and textile overlays throughout, some Topo branding here on the lateral side, and then back here on the heel as well. Looking at the midsole, you have that zip foam midsole. It's very lightweight, very breathable. I would describe it as being a little bit more plush or like medium density regarding its density and how it feels on the foot regarding its versatility, responsiveness, and stability. Looking at the tongue construction, the lacing construction, you have one, two, three, four, five eyelets that go up with a six back here for lace lock. I've only been using the top fifth eyelet and that's been plenty fine for my security needs. The tongue itself, I actually really like this feature has two loops here towards the top of the tongue. That helps keep this tongue in place. Honestly, I wish more shoe companies would do this because this tongue doesn't have a gusset. However, I have yet to have any issues with this tongue sliding at all. The tongue itself is built with a padded mesh. It's not the thickest tongue in the game, but it does give you enough protection and padding, I think, to make it, the fit of this model pretty dang comfortable. Looking at the boot, you don't have a super rigid boot, so if you like a lot of ankle support, definitely keep that in mind before investing in this model. And then looking at the outsole, you have rubber tread up here in the forefoot and then back here on the heel and then through the midfoot here you have all this exposed foam it helps keep this shoe lightweight but again that can be a little bit problematic regarding long-term durability so keep an eye on this if you're going to be wearing this shoe a lot outdoors if you have additional questions on the st5 drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Topo Athletic ST5. This isn't gonna be a shoe that I think is your best performer in any one category. However, I do see its utility for certain contexts, especially as a bridge shoe from traditional training and running shoes to more minimalist shoes. If you have additional questions on the ST5, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always y'all, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel, I'll see you in the next one.